Shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Giving honor and praise unto the Most High, the Creator and the Maker of heaven and earth. Brothers and sisters, this particular presentation is going to be as stated in honor of Imam Miriam. Now, brothers and sisters, this particular presentation is three weeks after I did a presentation in regards to another female teacher of mine by the name of Ima Tamikia. But I want to state before I get into the actual presentation, one, the reason why, two, the cause why. And brothers and sisters, the reason why is because when I was a child, in a place called Kosher Erit, which is located in New York. I remember, brothers and sisters, Grant Miriam and her family that used to come through. I used to, after Shabbat, play games with her sons. You understand? Their names to be anonymous because I didn't get the permission to even speak upon it online, but they know who they are. I'm talking about the ones that's immediate to my age, and I'm 39 years old. So, brothers and sisters, that is the reason. Now, the cause, brothers and sisters, is my mother, may she rest in peace, was a peer to Ima or Miriam. Now, let me explain something. When we say Ima, we're saying the word mother. When we say Gaveret, that comes from the Hebrew root word gabar. The word gabar, brothers and sisters, means to win. So when we say geberet, that is the feminine way of saying champion or one that wins. All right. Now, the only rules that we have in this particular thing, this particular presentation, obviously, one is no disrespect intended. No disrespect indirect. No disrespect direct. If such is seen, that person by one of the admins will be escorted out of the room permanently. You understand? So, brothers and sisters, I remember being a very young child. And of course, my mother was always one I can go to. And this is in no way disrespect intended to my mother. But my mother did not know the language in that particular regard as Gavir Miriam knew it and knows it. You understand? I remember brothers and sisters seeing my mother under the tutelage, may he rest in peace, of the elder Mora Yosef ben Ephraim, as well as Adon Yishai in a place called Koshia Eri. You will be surprised of the things that one will remember from their childhood. When we left brothers and sisters Koshia Eri in 1990, eventually in the year 1992, we went to a congregation called Hashaba Yisrael when they were in New York. And I remember being coached, if you will, by being told certain things after Shabbat when I was going to be like the Maftir. Um, for those who know what the Maftir is, it's basically um, a portion in the Tanakh that coincides with the Torah portion. The Torah is from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Kosherit, as well as Hashaba, used to go from Bereshit. Noach, Lech Lecha, and so forth and so on, once it came down into that particular aspect. One of the distinctions with Hashaba is, no disrespect to Koshe Erit, they had a thing called the Haftara. The word Haftara, brothers and sisters, is what the Maftir does. And how does that coincide with what we're talking about? When you see the word Miriam, it has a mem in the beginning and a mem in the end. And what we want to deal with, getting into the form of Hebrew, brothers and sisters, such as was taught by More Hoshea, such as was taught by More Mishael, such as was taught by More Tibak, such as was taught by Adon Aharon, brothers and sisters. These are things we want to get into to understand how the Hebrew language format itself and how it stands by itself. So we're going to deal, not being long-winded, in the aspect of the letter Mem, very frequent in this particular lesson. Okay? Now, Brothers and sisters, once it comes down to it, and I've decided to ask 
Ima Miriam on Facebook, will it be all right for me to even do so? Is because I remember distinctly one Saturday night, and this is why I say in the aspect of Mora, because you never know the influence that somebody can have on someone, is I was going to be a person that they probably would call to read the eighth proverb and so forth and so on. And I remember when Kohen Lewi, may he rest in peace, called me up to read the eighth proverb. And I remember being extremely nervous. And I looked into the people who I knew from when I was even younger. And I distinctly remember like words speaking, saying, continue, you can do it. That kind of thing. And I just went on in that particular regard. So brothers and sisters, once it comes down into this particular subject, we want to continue in honoring of our Zekwanot. Zekwanot, brothers and sisters, is the Hebrew word for elders when you're speaking in the feminine plural. Hebrew, as Mordem Mishael pointed out, is the language of gender. And as we've been pointing out, brothers and sisters, the letter He, the letter Tau, are feminine letters. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, Without any further ado, giving honor to the creator of heaven and earth, this particular lesson on a human level is in honor of Gerard Miriam. Let us continue on, brothers and sisters. Miriam. Now, what we are looking at right here in the English transliteration is Miriam. But of course, we know good and well that's not how we would say it. All right. You have, brothers and sisters, all right, and I want to show this if we will, with the laser pointer, right? The mem, the resh, the yod, and the mem. Now, as we know, Miriam was a person that was the older sister to the prophet Moshe. You understand? So now when you look at the mem there, under it, you have the kirik, you have the resh, the resh has a shawa. So what you do in that regard, as explained, Brothers and sisters, is you join it together with the sound that's before it. So that's why you just read it as mir, and then you continue reading on with the rest. Mir yam. All right? So this is something we want to point out for edification purposes. All right? Shalom. This particular presentation is an honor of a mora slash teacher of mine in Hebrew. Now, the Hebrew word mora. All right, and I want to underline something for edification purposes. All right, with the pin right there. This particular part that we're seeing, it's likely this particular part that you're seeing there with the M right there with the Mora. If it had been a male teacher, it would have, as we already know and figure out, the word more. So mora is the feminine way of saying teacher. Now, we want to emphasize this for a particular purpose because we want to show how the word more and mora. Does anybody know or able to type in the room? How do you say, brothers and sisters, the word parent in Hebrew? How do you say parent in Hebrew? Anybody? How would one, brothers and sisters, say the word parent in Hebrew? Does anybody know? Because Ima is mother and Abba is father. But what I'm asking is how do you say the word parent, brothers and sisters? Okay, somebody typed in and said, thank you, the word hora. The word hora, told out for that, is female parent. And as we see here, Miriam Levy typed in horim. The word horim means parents, as in mother and father, male and female parent. Now, let's understand something. If mora is teacher and hora is parent, can we say, for instance, that there's something connecting in Hebrew thought between parenting and teaching? And if the root of that is hora, 
brothers and sisters, meaning to teach. And a hora is a female parent. You can see how it coincides with mora. And now, brothers and sisters, what does this word mean that's being typed into the room? Anybody? What does that word there mean? The word that's typed into the room for those able to see it is the word Torah. Teachings, correct. So, now, teaching, law. Okay, let me emphasize on why I would state um, that the word Torah more so means teaching and not law directly is because the Hebrew word ko means statute or law. But that's not to say that the Torah is not the law. So we just want to point that out. All right. So this is something we want to point out in that particular regard. All right. So now when you look at a particular situation, such as hora, female parent, Torah, teaching, and mora, Teacher, female. You see the mora, the female teacher, he hora ha Torah. The female parent teaches the law. That or known is speaking Hebrew. See, when we speak about the aspect like the book that I wrote, which Imam Miriam has a shout out in, all right, when you, the Hebrew book called Hebrew is easy, we could begin to see how easy it is. Ha hora, the female parent, he, we know he, me, she, ha hora, the female parent, he hora, she teaches ha Torah, the law, the teaching. She, the female parent teaches the teaching. That is how easy Hebrew is. So when you have certain things to say the letter mem, we want to emphasize in this that it serves as a prefix, brothers and sisters. The person's name is Ima slash mother. Miriam, I put it in a regular, bat lewi. Now let's understand something while we get into the Hebrew aspect here, like in the word bat. The word bat, brothers and sisters, it means daughter. Regardless of how old a person is, you're still the daughter of someone. Bat means daughter, okay? And lewi means to join. The word lewi means to join from the Hebrew root word hilwa. The Hebrew word, word hilwa means to join or to attach. This is why when you go, for instance, um, in the book of Numbers chapter 18 about the Levites, it says they shall be joined unto their brethren. And the root word there is the root word lewi. Now, in giving honor to our mothers, you do know of the 12 tribes of Israel, only one was named by their dad. Reuben, Shimon, Lewi. Yehuda, Don, Naftali, God, Asher, Yisaska, Zebulun, and Yosef, the first 11 tribes of Israel were named by their mothers. When Rachel gave birth to Benjamin, or to their last child, she shouted his name as Ben-Oni. You understand? Which means son of my sorrow. But obviously, for self-esteem purposes, Jacob could not let his son be named like that. So he's going to name him son of the right side or son of a right hand. You know, may Rachel rest in peace. All right. This is a person I knew since I was eight years old, actually before then. But I remember being eight when I used to ask questions. It was able to ask for information and glean knowledge from. She was a friend to my mother and a mother to many of us in a congregation called She'eri and Hashaba. Shalom. Now, one of the other reasons we want to emphasize on why we do this is because it says you shall rise before the hoary head. You never, brothers and sisters, get to the level not to be haughty when you are respected as a moray and you just going to try to sit there and say, oh, I taught, I'm self-taught. Ain't nobody teach me. I, I just studied on my own. I worked and I bought books and I studied. That's arrogant. Because even if you learn something that didn't come from a human directly, the most high 
El Elyon, the Most High God, is the one who opened up one's eyes. So be very circumspect of anyone who says that they're self-taught. That's not Tob, or as some say, Tova, whichever way you may want to say it. It's not good. That's Zadon. You know what Zadon means? Arrogant. You understand? That's Tebel. You know what Tebel means? Wickedness. You find that in the book of Leviticus 18. But let's go on, if you will, to the next part. The letter Mem. Now, what you're looking at here, brothers and sisters, on the left-hand side is, and I want to emphasize what I'm talking about with the um, laser pointer, this is Mem in ancient Hebrew. All right, the Hebrew that Solomon would have been singing and so forth. All right, now let's go. The Hebrew we want to emphasize what is referred to as modern Hebrew, truthfully, is the Aramaic, not Assyrian, but the Aramaic script. Just as much as this. This is why I love my teacher, Moore Mishael, because he used to say things like, your notes are for you. So let's look at this, for instance. You have A, B, Ab, meaning father, right? That's in English letters, but it's not an English word. It's a Hebrew word written in English letters. So my point, nonetheless, that is referred to, um, brothers and sisters, as what they refer to as transliteration in many, many cases, or metathesis, more so to be accurate. That's more so the term in that particular regard when you're studying the aspect of linguistics. But let's get back to this. The Hebrew that we're seeing, that we're going to go over, for the most part, such as this letter here, is the Aramaic script. The numerical value of the letter Mem is 40, four, zero, all right? The word Mem, like Mayim, means water, all right? The word Mayim also means waters. So what that points out to us in Hebrew is just because something ends with the letter or sound Im, 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 doesn't always make it plural. Bitulim means virginity. That's not plural. Elohim means God. That's not plural. Mayim means water. That's not plural. Chayim means life. That's not plural. You understand? So what we're talking about when we say things like Chayim as life, Elohim as God, we're seeing the immensity of what we're talking about. I remember taking it back to Kosher Eri, 1988, 1987. I'm like eight, nine years old. And if I had Garrett Miriam's permission, I would have put a picture up, not, not Garrett Miriam's, but her children's permission. I would have put a picture up of her last Bane and I. But when I asked the brother, okay, no problem. Now, let's get back to what we're talking about here, brothers and sisters, because I'm not too fond of always showing my picture neither. Now, When we're dealing with the letter mem in Hebrew, it serves in many cases as a prefix. In many cases, the word that begins with the letter mem, brothers and sisters, when you're dealing with the aspect of, say, a noun, right? You're dealing with from. All right, F-R-O-M. Mayhem, from them. Memeni, from me. Mimena, from her. Okay, so that can be understood. I remember the prayer that we used to sing. Hopefully I get it right. Now, why did I go there? I remember we used to sing that in the class that Gavert Miriam used to operate. And if she wasn't doing it, it was another elder named Ima Shalomi. Now, what I'm getting into is taking it into the year 2019 and taking us way back 30 years for those who did not know about Israel before YouTube existed, before Facebook existed. Israelites were introduced to Facebook. 
we were already around inside of congregations. We were already around brothers and sisters inside of camps, brothers and sisters having things being passed on from person to person. This is why I'd say for myself, giving honor to Yah, I don't run on everybody's channel to try to get a video out. Because my teachers, be they, rest in peace. For Mora Yosef to Kohen Lewi to Adon Yishai, brothers and sisters, to many, many others. They didn't have no Facebook page. But the memory and the legacy that they left is what we honor. Now, why did I go and spoke about real quickly concerning that prayer like that? When I look in here, Imam Miriam wrote, Toda for the honor. Toda, what does Toda mean? Thanks. Toda means thanks. Right? And brothers and sisters, the word mode means to give thanks. Hoda is the root of that. Do we see how Hebrew is working, brothers and sisters? Toda means thanks. Mode for the male and moda for the female means to give thanks. When Leah gave birth to Judah, she said, this time will I praise Yah. So when she named him Yahuda, Huda, brothers and sisters means to give thanks. Or pardon me, to be thanked. That's what it means. So Yahuda means the most high is to be thanked. That's what that name means in that particular regard. So we want to show the simplicity, brothers and sisters, once you understand certain pre, um, prefixes and suffixes, it's easy. I remember Kohen Mikael and the congregation Hashaba Yisrael, and he said something that was honest, but not maybe favored, so to speak. His statement was, get your degree, you will need it, fool. I remember him, I was 13 years old at Hashaba when he said that. Get your degree, you will need it, fool. Now that's, you can sit there and take it for what it is. Solomon called the people fools several times in Proverbs. So one of the things to point out is I remember certain women inside of Hashaba, namely in this case, Imam Miriam saying, Cain, Cain. And so now being able to say that I have two degrees, this is why I am able to comfortably give honor to those who help set the tone. You don't realize just the little thing that can sit there and be like, click, click, that's it. You understand? Now, for those who are following in the chat, Imam Miriam wrote, it's part of the Bakalam. Okay, this is very true. Let us verbally explain what the Bakalam is. All right, ba, in, or with, ka, like, or as, la, to, or for, and the mem means from or of. All right, so that mem letter is very, very important. Let's go on to the next slide. All right, as we were talking, the matter of Mem. Since the mother's name starts with the letter Mem, we will focus on that in this presentation. In the past, we explained that the letter Mem serves as a prefix. When making a verb a noun, we see the letter Mem as a prefix. So let's go over here and show with the laser pointer. Remember, brothers and sisters, that Hebrew is read from right to left. So you have here the word daber, and root meaning to speak. Meh daber, the present tense, speaking or a speaker now. I want to highlight this mem right here. This letter mem, brothers and sisters, serves as the prefix that we were talking about, right? 
Now, if you take that mem off, you still got the dalit, the bait, and the race. The dalit, the bait, and the race. So as we already understand, okay, that Hebrew is read from right to left. That's how we know, brothers and sisters, let's highlight this, all right, that the letter mem serves as a prefix. And we're going to show some of that as we go on. So when you have a verb such as daber, a root meaning to speak, midaber means a speaker, that is a person. A noun is a person, place, or a thing. So if you have a speaker to a radio, or if you are, or someone else is a person who is a speaker, you would say, who midaber, he is a speaker. Feminine, he midaberet. You understand? Because you got to have the aspect of the feminine in there. And I want to take just this little bit of time out now, right? I don't show her picture on Facebook because there's people out there that are weirdos. But I have a little girl who's 12 years old. And this is something that, may he rest in peace, an elder in Israel named Kohen Reuben. He told me, because I was like, I remember I was living in Brooklyn when my daughter was, um, you know, born and everything. So it's like, how do you go in this society and not to be funny or get too personal, my daughter's mom is not in this way of life. So, but I respect the fact that she was supportive to be like, I want a cultural name. I don't want those names like um, Monique and Tiffany and so forth. So we was going to go over Hebrew names, which we did. Do you understand? And so one thing I can say in respect to my daughter's mother is the fact that she never tried to stifle the child to learn the language. So now getting back to what the advice that Adon, may he rest in peace now, Adon Kohen Reuben was saying when I asked him, I said, what's a good way to go over certain things with that? Say the child's name and then translate it in English. Shalosha, which means three. Now, when you talk to the child, tell her to do something and then translate it immediately and the child will begin to take on both understanding. So that is why earlier before the class, I being currently in New York, my child currently being in California, when we did FaceTime and everything, the conversation was no English allowed. See, the school system here dumbs down the children. And I'm a, not to be disrespectful, a product of the public school system from Brooklyn, the Bronx, and so forth and so on. You understand? But what I will say is that when they try to tell me and my little one's mother, well, try not to speak, you know, so many languages, it's going to confuse the, the child is not going to be confused. By the time a child is five, he or she knows how to use the bathroom, knows how to run, walk, talk, speak. Do good and do bad. Who they can get over on and who, oh, I can't play that with grandma. Because not to be too personal, the things our little girl knows she can do with us, she know is a no-no with her grandmother. My point in saying all of that is that there are certain things, brothers and sisters, that by the age of five, a child already knows. So when they try to tell you in this system here to stifle a child so the child's growth doesn't um, articulate and grow, they're trying to keep you in the box. That's why it tells you in Proverbs, pardon me, Psalms, thy law makes me wiser than my teachers. And this is not to be disrespectful or anything of that sort. I was taught under the great Mori Yosef. From when I was two years old in Kosher Eri, I remember in the first grade, coming out of Kosher Eri after every Shabbat, every Shabbat, reading the Torah, reading the Vedicus, reading numbers, every Shabbat, every Shabbat, I remember going over the entire menstrual system for the teacher, understanding Leviticus chapter 15. I was six years old, giving honor to the most high. I said, yeah, a woman may have a flow of blood. Some people call it a menstrual time or a period. And not to be gross, but we're going to talk life. And um, in that time, she separated from the rest of the community and the family. And the teacher was like, what are you talking about? 
I said, according to some cultures, and she said, well, what's your culture? You have a religion? Coming out of kosher I don't have a religion. I have a culture. Okay, well, where are you getting this from? And I distinctly remember saying Leviticus. So the teacher said in school, oh, you're talking about the Bible. And I say this no disrespect to people who may listen, who might be messianic or who might believe in Jesus. But I didn't know anything about Jesus until I was seven years old. I knew Leviticus 15 before I heard of Jesus Christ. So now getting back to the course of what we're talking about and honoring of the teachers that I've had, I remember being in a public school and I said, what's the Bible? The teacher was like, yeah, you said Leviticus, it's in the Bible. I said, I don't know what that is. I, the Tanakh. The teacher was like, what? I said, it's the Tanakh. We read the Tanakh where we go and we worship. Leviticus in the Bible. And I said, I really don't know what the Bible is, ma'am. And so looking at it, brothers and sisters, in that particular regard, those are the kinds of things that you can remember coming up out of a certain place. Being taught by certain kinds of qualified teachers in the house of Yisrael. You understand? So looking at it now, getting back into this particular subject, because we're going over Hebrew and we also want to honor our elders. Now, looking at this right here, when it says, Medaber, the present tense, speaking or a speaker. All right. So we can understand what we're talking about for edification purposes. Next slide. Now, brothers and sisters, explanation of verb matters. All right. We want to sit there and go over this for reason and purposes, right? And what do we see in this particular regard? I want to get the laser pointer, sorry. The letter mem serves as a prefix in dealing with verbs. There are seven verb stems, and of the seven, the following have a mem as a prefix in the present tense. Piel, the intensification of the qual stem. Pu'al, the passive of the piel. Hif'il, the causative of the qual stem. Huf'al, the passive of the hif'il stem. Hipa'el, the reflexive of the stems. So brothers and sisters, there are seven stems. And of what we're looking at here, we're talking about the last five. Sometimes you will see the hefil as the seventh and the hipael as the fifth. Regardless of that, we still want to continue on. PL is the intensification of the qual stem. Now, daber in the PL stem is said as daber. But daber means to speak. All right? So a male would say, ani midaber. If we were speaking in the third person of a parent, we would say, Hahore Medaber, which means the male parent is speaking. Hahore Medaber Hatora, the male parent is speaking the law. Make it feminine. Hahora Medaberet Hatora, the female parent is speaking the law. He mela medet hatora el baneha, where el benoteha. She is teaching the Lord to her sons and to her daughters. Baneha u noteha, him yo spin takteha, ka asho he medaberet al hatora. Her sons and her daughters, they sit under her as she speaks the law. Now, we want to emphasize, as Kohen Mikael pointed out, once you understand one verb pattern, everything else falls in sequence. Hebrew is easy. When somebody tells you that Hebrew is difficult, you know what you call them? I'm going to sit there and say this here. This is what we call people, brothers and sisters, who say, dealing with this mem letter, that Hebrew is difficult. We have a word for these kind of people. It starts with the letter mem. Resh. Mem, hey, 
That's what you call somebody who says Hebrew is difficult. That word there spelled the word mirma, which means falsehood. The person is a mitshakwir, a liar. That person is of the spirit of mit kazeim, falsehood. Hebrew, brothers and sisters, is not difficult. It is different. We're not going to sit there and be a mitshakwir or a liar. But Hebrew is not hard. All right. Learn the vocabulary that you use every day in English. If you are a chef, learn how to say sir for pot, bichel for cook, tanor for stove, mebashel, ani, I am cooking. Learn the word mazon, which means food. If you are brothers and sisters and artists, learn the word et for pen. Iparon for pencil, Nayar for paper. That's how you can sit there and learn, brother, sisters, Hebrew to be very easy is to learn the vocabulary you use regularly, so therefore it will glean to you. Okay? So now, brother, sisters, you notice something about this, and I want to highlight something I wanted to point out, all right? Highlighter, mem, 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 mem. All of that has the letter mem, and all of that's in the present tense. That's why I said the following have a mem as a prefix in the present tense. We want to emphasize, please, if you're following and taking notes, please, I'm almost asking you. Almost asking, LOL. Please underline present tense, because if you look at these roots with the PL and everything like that in the past tense, you're not going to really find that mem. But this is about the letter mem in this particular teaching. All right? So now, the pu'al is the passive of the PL. If the PL midaber means speaking, then the word midubar, having the three dots down, midubar, brothers and sisters, all right, means spoken. Hadabar midubar, the word is spoken, all right? So that's something we just want to point out in that regard. Then we have within the brothers and sisters the heath ill stem. All right. Mod beer. Mod beer, brother sisters, mean to subdue. Now, how does that, brother sisters, connect with meaning to subdue and what we're talking about? Let's emphasize on what we're talking about so we can. Get into it. The word deber, dalet bet resh, also means pestilence. You see that in the word, you see that word in Deuteronomy 28 about pestilence. You see it in Exodus chapter 9 about the plague and the pestilence, ha deber. All right. So now when you read brothers and sisters in Hebrew, showing one more time how easy it is, um, when we get into this, um, in this regard, mad bir means to subdue. Hadebir mab mat bir orha. The pestilence subdues you. So now, if we see the hufal as the passive of the he feel, the he feel here meaning to subdue, we have what? Mad bar. Mad bar which means to be subdued, all right? Because as pointed out, the bear means pestilence. You know what else the word me bar means? Anybody? What does the word me bar mean? Can anybody else take a shot at that particular one? The word me bar also means what, brothers and sisters?
Now, you see it in many cases, like we call the book of Numbers. And the Hebrew said, Bamibar, which means in what? Toda Raba, Ima. Toda Raba, Sister Damiel. Wilderness. The wilderness, Midbar. The bear pestilence. Dabar, a word or thing. So when we can see, one more time with this prefix with the mem, mad bir, meaning to subdue, mad bar, brothers and sisters, mean to be subdued. We can see how pestilence would subdue. This is how Hebrew is easy, all right? Then we have, brothers and sisters, in the Hippael stem. This is what you call an irregular because it doesn't have the tau in it, but that'll be another subject, all right? Mi da ber. Mi da ber means to converse. Ani mi da ber. I converse. Ani mi da ber itcha. I converse with you. Ani mi da ber ito. I converse with him. Ani mi da ber bbiti. Bamukdam. Ha ere paze. Let's go in. Ani mi da ber. I converse. Babiti with my daughter. Bamukdam earlier. By Ere Paze earlier in this evening. All right, so this is something we just want to point out for edification purposes. If you're going to have children or if you're teaching children from the womb, take the advice that Adon Koyone Ubain told me, say it in Hebrew, and then immediately say it in English. And sure enough, that child knows. Not to sit there and throw her under the bus, so to speak. How to obey and being a child of mine, you know what they say. I hope you get children like you. How to also disobey. Because I know you know what I said when you was two and three. I'll teach me a knock. When I told the child, do not turn the corner. You stopped, looked at me and turned the corner anyway. So I know you know what I'm saying. You understand? And let's go on, if we will, to the next part. All right, the matter of mem. Remember we spoke earlier about it being like the suffix and so forth and so on. So we want to go over some aspects and color code this for edification purposes. So we're going to take the highlighter, if we will, brothers and sisters, and we got mem, mem. Mem, I like that word right there, actually. Mem, 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 noon, gamel, and noon, which is peculiar because my daughter's favorite Hebrew letter in English is N, and in Hebrew is the letter noon, just like mine is the letter noon. But anyway, getting back into this particular aspect right here. So now let's underline what we're talking about. Right, and we want to underline this in black just to be a little different. All right, let's look at this here. The mem serves as a prefix, but this is one whole word. This is the word meat back. I'm going to type in what this is. All right, meat back. What does meat back mean, brothers and sisters? Anybody? All right, for edification purposes. What does meat bak mean, brothers and sisters? Because we do want to get into the aspect of with this and learning Hebrew itself. Does anybody know what the word meat bak means? Now the word meat bar means means wilderness. What does the word meat bak mean? Anybody? The word meat bak, brothers and sisters, Toda Rabba Ima means the word kitchen. 
Now, how do we get that? You see this word here, and we're going to, um, all right, highlight this, but with a different color for edification purposes. The tet, the bet, and the chet, tabak. The word tabak, brothers and sisters, means to slay. That's what the word tabak, all right? So now when you look at this particular aspect, you have meat bak, and that's translated as kitchen. So now if the verb, remember we said earlier, brothers and sisters, right? That in the past we explained that the letter mem serves as a prefix. When making a verb, a noun, we see the letter mem as a prefix. All right. So now let's go back to explain how this is working in this particular regard. You have here, brothers and sisters, the word tabak, which means to slay. Mitbak means kitchen, because in the kitchen is where you slay your animals if you're going to eat animals. That's how Hebrew works. This letter mem, as we've been pointing out, serves as a prefix in that particular regard. All right. Let's highlight this next one here in red. Now, the mem still there serves as a prefix. So if you were to drop that mem off, you have the word loon. La med wa noon sophie. Knowing that this serves as a prefix. Brothers and sisters, the verb loon, okay, it comes comes from the root Haline. Does anybody know what Haline in Hebrew means? You see this in the book of Genesis periodically, and I'm going to throw a hint. It has something to do with the nighttime. So what does the word Haline mean, brothers and sisters? Loon is the root of such. Does anybody know in root what that means for edification purposes? The root word Haleen means to tarry, spin the night in the verb form. Now, that's why I said you see that a lot in Genesis. Tarry here tonight, stay over the night, and so forth. Aline means I will spend the night. Talene means you will spend the night or she will spend the night. We'll explain the second person masculine in the future tense is the same in the third person feminine in the future tense. So now let's get back into this here. This word here, by default, brothers and sisters, then spells, okay, the word Malone. Malone, brothers and sisters, means hotel. Now do you begin to see how easy Hebrew is and the significance of the letter Mem as a prefix in this particular regard? Any questions about this? Please feel free to type. Now we get to my favorite word so far. Okay, let's look at this here. We want to highlight this in green, my mother's favorite color. Let's look at this here. Again, we have the mem as a prefix so you can get some vocabulary, right? The resh, the wow, and the mem. That in root spells the word room. Does anybody know what room in Hebrew is? <clears throat> Well, does anybody know what that means in Hebrew? Room, it's a verb. And for those who are familiar, brothers and sisters, it is referred to as an iron wild verb. 
In other words, it's a verb that has a wow as the second root letter. Anybody? What does room in Hebrew mean? Anybody care to take a shot at that one for edification purposes? What does the room and for a quote a bonus, what would brothers and sisters be for understanding purposes, the mem in front of it in meaning me? Anybody? If not, we'll go on and translate it ourselves. Let's look at this. All right, let's go on. We have the mem, the resh, the wow, and the mem. This word here, brothers and sisters, means marom. The word marom means height because the word room in Hebrew means to exalt. All right? Room in Hebrew word is exalt. And I want to type this in. The Hebrew word for room say you spend the night in is cheder so i wanted i wanted to emphasize the distinction like a room in english the word room in hebrew said is cheder whereas the word room in hebrew means a root word meaning to exalt so now when you put the mem in front of it, marom means height. Maromi, my height, is such and such and such and such. All right? Any questions? Please feel free, because we're completing very soon. All right, so let's go on, if we will, to the next part. We have here, and we want to show with the highlighter, all right? In fact, let's just do it like this because we're running out of highlighted colors. All right. Let's look at this here. Laser pointer. Mem samek pe resh. Drop off the mem. You have samek pe resh. Sapor means to tell. Sipur means a story. So now if you have this thing in a verb form, Right, if sapar means to tell, misapir means telling. Ani misapir sipur. I am telling a story. All right, that's how that works in that particular regard. Then we have, brothers and sisters, with the highlighter, the mem, the noon. Me and my little one's favorite letter, the noon, the gamel, and the noon, Sophie. Now, this word here, drop off the mem, if you were, you get the noon, the gamel, and the noon. That spells not gain. What does the word not gain mean? Anybody knows that? Does anybody know what the word not gain means? All righty. Now gain means to make music. In most cases, like coming out of Hashabo, they would say not gain means to drum. Cain, it does mean to play, um, but it's talking about playing instruments or music. Now again, now again, you might have heard that. We might have heard that when they were playing the drums or something of that sort. Now again, now again, that kind of thing. Well, what they're saying when they're saying now again is they're saying make music, play music. Cane, as in drums, right. When I gain out how top theme, you know, make music with the drums, that kind of aspect. Cane, so now when you're dealing with this men I gain, that mem serves as a prefix 
as in many other cases that's pointed out. Now, lastly, we have the Mem, the Dalit, the Wow, and the Ayin. Let's look at that right there. Mem Dalit Wow Ayan. This spells the word Madua. What does Madua mean, anybody? You see this in the song 76 song. You know what turned me on to Hebrew? was the fact that Joseph's brothers didn't know what he was saying. Or, pardon me, Joseph's brothers didn't know that Joseph knew what they were saying, sorry. Cain, madua means why, as in a question form. Madua ata, why are you? Madua ata, misapir, why are you telling? Madua ata, medaber. Why are you speaking? Madua ata. Melin, why are you spending the night? Madua ata minagain, why are you playing music? So let's emphasize how we get this word madua to be what it is and then close out with the time allotted. All right? Let's look at this here. You have the mem, the letter we've been picking on. All right? The dalit. The wow and the iron. As we see here, mem dalit wow iron. Now I'm going to erase this mem and rewrite it with a different color, but I just wanted to show it for edification purposes with that. And we're going to put this mem here again, but in black. Why are we doing this? For edification purposes. If you drop off in the word madua, the mem, you get dua, du, ah. What does dua mean in Hebrew? That word has a meaning. What does dua mean? Because we want to show how easy Hebrew is. See, this is why the book that I wrote, giving honor to the Most High, I call it Hebrew is easy. It's different, but it's not difficult. You will see begin pattern left and right and all over the place. Just remember, learn the vocabulary that you use first. So what does the word do I mean? All right, we're going to figure this out and break this down and expound upon it together. You have the Yod, the Dalit, and the Ayin. Yada. What does Yada mean? It's a verb, by the way. The word yada means what, brothers and sisters? Yada means to know. Yada ti, I knew. Eda, I will know. Yo de a, knowing, present tense. So if yada means to know, right? Then you have madua. What happened in a nutshell, brothers and sisters, just so we can understand what's happened for edification purposes, right? No, we're going to cross this out in the purple, right? The yo drops out. You get the word da. And as Imam Miriam stated, da'at, if you were to put the tau, which does serve at times as a suffix, you get the word da'at, which means knowledge. But by having yada with this dropped out, told our Rabbi Imam for that, you have ma'dua. But if you already dropped out the mem, you get dua. The word dua means science. Ma, what does ma mean by itself? Means just that. What? Ma dua. 
means why. Also can be said as what is the science of. So when you say why is this, you're also saying what is the science of this? The science, do my pardon me, the word for science in Hebrew is dua, which also comes from the root word yada, which means to know. The at means knowledge, giving honor and praise unto the most high, the creator and the maker of heaven and earth. I hope we can begin to see how easy Hebrew is. All right. Any questions? Please feel free to comment. Brothers and sisters, this was on a human level an honor to a female teacher of mine, the Red Miriam, Mora Miriam, Batlewi, and hopefully it was understood. Shalom, Lala Tob. Good night. Any questions, feel free to comment in the comment board when this is uploaded.